the first time I came to the UK, my partner and I had visited for his sister's wedding. It was a beautiful week in June and everyone said, it's never like this. It's gorgeous, it's hot. It's never like this in the UK. The second time I arrived, I landed in the middle of winter. It was freezing cold. I'd never been in winter before. I'd never seen snow. I'd never done any of that. And I was struck by how cold it was, but the fact that my hair felt cold, I was so confused. Like, why was my hair cold? So I am from Trinidad and Tobago, but my mum's from Guyana. So I did my first degree in Trinidad and then went on to do my medical degree in Guyana. As students, we were doing the jobs of F1. So by the time I moved here as an F1, I already knew what I was doing, which was fantastic because there's so much to learn when you move to a new country, knowing the job already and knowing how to do medicine meant that at least I started off with an advantage. So in medical school, uh, I went out one evening with friends and got introduced to a guy, as it happened, who was British and working in Guyana. And then thought, oh, he's nice. And didn't know that that would lead to me deciding to move halfway across the world. It took us a year and a half uh, to battle through the visa where they first they refused it. We appealed. They said that we were wrong. We went through a year and a half of me not being able to work. Eventually ended up at a tribunal hearing where the judge said, yeah, you guys are right. I was just grateful to be able to start working, being able to use my degree and put it to some use and not sit in a house and feel useless anymore. My first job was in Basildon in Essex, which was a learning experience in itself. I went to work every morning. The girls would come to work with a full face of makeup, glammed up, and I would be really grateful if I'd combed my hair that day. If English is your first language, you have an advantage. Sometimes not that much of an advantage. If you go to somewhere like Glasgow, where, again, it's such a difficult accent. But if you're not working in a different language, it's so tiring. There are so many things, even though it's English, that are different. As an F1 one day, uh, I went to see a patient and she was lying in bed and she was looking distressed. And I asked her if there's anything I could do to help her. And she said to me she wanted to spend a penny. I'd never heard that before. I went up to the nurse's station and said, I think my patient's confused. I think we need to do it like screen, find out, you know, what's causing a confusion. And the nurse said, what? what she done. I was like, oh, she said she wants to go to the shop. And she's like, no, no, no. Specifically, what did she say? She wanted to spend a penny. And then the nurse laughed and she explained that she meant she wanted to use the loo. And I was just confused. It was quite a learning experience, learning phrases like that and just simple little expressions. So my partner made me watch a couple of shows, quite often watching shows and just talking to people helps to get that cultural, get culturally embedded, I think. I have a friend currently who's applying for jobs from Trinidad and saying to me, I have no idea what the ad even says. So you have to navigate the minefield first of which jobs to apply to, what they're looking for, how to apply to it. You do the application, you do the interview, you wait, you don't hear back. Finally, somebody says they want to give you a job, you sign a contract because you have no idea what it says and then you arrive here and find out oh my god what have I landed myself into so one of the things that the BMA does do really well is contract checking 25% uh, of the contracts that they checked in the last year were wrong so the BMA contract checking service if you're coming from outside of the country is such a valuable tool because first of all it tells you what the terms and conditions of your service are whether your contract actually is right what your re employment job is going to be and it helps before you arrive to know that things are going to be correct or if not then you go back to the trust and say hang on this isn't right my union said you need to be better we've got an img landing page now that's got all this information so before you arrive uh, we've got support so you can tell the BMA, we contract checked, we t give you advice, we tell you about things, there's visa support services. And then once you land in the country, there's IMG inductions as well. If you have a, any issue, come to the BMA. This is what we're here for. As an IMG myself, I understand I didn't want to raise my head above the parapet, even though I wasn't on a tier two visa. This is what we do. If you are 
being bullied, if you're being harassed, if your contract isn't right, if you aren't being supported, this is what your union's for. And we are here to make sure that you are taken care of. So come to us, we will help, we will support. We've done it and we will do it and continue to do it.